Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Tim. Appreciate the, the introduction. And it's certainly a pleasure to be a part of this Hidden Gems webinar and certainly share the stage with uh, three other fantastic companies in the sector. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, just general disclaimer, thank you. Um, uh, a company we certainly think is driven by its leadership team and we, we certainly think that um, the, the leadership team within NSB is exemplary and uh, this was really put together by our founders, Matt and Anton, who are sitting in the centre there, who have experience across commercialisation of medical uh, devices and pharmaceuticals, as well as uh, capital markets and, and being involved in, in other um, publicly listed companies. We had a recent addition um, uh, about a month or two ago uh, of Paul Reddy, which was uh, exceptional for us. Um, Paul has great experience in clinical development, having um, had uh, executive positions in Mesoblast and uh, founding Paradigm Pharmaceuticals. Uh, we certainly also have a great scientific advisory with a great mix of preclinical and clinical development experience across uh, both the ophthalmology and neurological programs where we are focused. Uh, next slide, please. So NSB, as, as Tim really introduced, we, we are um, focused on uh, the development of peptide-based compounds uh, as therapeutic treatments for the neurodegenerative conditions uh, of which the vast majority lack effective treatment options. And we currently have two therapeutic programs, one in neurology focusing on Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis and an ophthalmology program focusing on degenerative conditions of the optic nerve, such as glaucoma. Next slide, thank you. Um, what we will talk about is Empton B, which is our, um, our, our key, uh, our lead um, peptide. Uh, and this Empton B really is a novel therapeutic that protects and regenerates nerve cells. Um, and it, it also has the ability to modulate inflammation, which is incredibly novel. Um, this protein is based on a naturally occurring protein within the human innate immune system called metallophanin 2, which is on the left-hand side of that slide, uh, with uh, Empton B essentially being a, a beta domain of uh, metallophanin 2. Um, what else is novel about uh, Empton B is its target. So we are targeting an, a, a receptor protein called LRP1. Uh, LRP1 is um, uh, expressed uh, regardless, uh, is, is expressed in, in, um, on the surface of new, uh, nerve cells. Um, it's also additionally expressed uh, on the blood brain barrier, which allows uh, infiltration of our product across uh, into the central nervous system and to the brain where we have our action. Um, and LRP1 receptor is expressed regardless of the type of neurodegenerative condition. And this is quite exciting because it certainly means that Empton B has the potential to be a treatment across multiple indications. Uh, and this activation of this receptor um, uh, promotes uh, cell survival and regeneration. So it's, it's quite, quite um, exciting to be, be part of this development. This is why I joined the company fairly recently. Next slide, thank you. Uh, as, as noted, we, uh, M2B really is a pipeline and a product. Um, so th through one therapeutic, we can look at uh, multiple indications. Uh, we obviously have to focus somewhere and uh, NSB has, has focused uh, at, at, uh, on um, Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis in neurology, as well as an ophthalmology program with a focus on glaucoma. Um, we also have some exploratory programs ongoing, um, and, and those are looking, are looking at um, inf inflammatory uh, models, uh, a lot in respiratory, so looking at pulmonary fibrosis of lung tissue, um, and uh, also inflammation that's associated with ARDS, which was recently reported. Uh, next slide, thank you. The current development state of Empton B is uh, relatively advanced. We still are a preclinical company. However, I was brought, brought on uh, into the company earlier this year really to drive us towards clinic. And the exciting thing to note is that we, uh, we are looking to hit uh, firstly human clinical trials uh, in late Q4 this year to initiate those studies. Um, we will be completing our final preclinical studies, which will allow us to conduct that clinical study. Um, during the early to mid fourth quarter in both neurological and ophthalmology uh, indications. 
uh, and our glaucoma study is slightly um, uh, following the urology uh, study just due to uh, some um, differences in timelines from the preclinical perspective. That's um, uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, we'll look at the neurology um, work first. Um, and we're really focused on uh, Alzheimer's disease and MS, uh, which have an incredibly high prevalence of disease uh, and amazingly underrepresented uh, when we look at useful therapies in this condition. Uh, and this really makes both these indications incredibly high reward potential uh, with, with huge uh, markets that are possible um, in the US as well as globally. Next slide, thank you. Um, what really initially got us excited about Empton B in uh, neurology uh, with a focus on MS and Alzheimer's disease was the, the, the these in vitro assays that uh, saw the promotion of neuro neuronal survival and regeneration. So Empton B treated cells um, uh, saw survival in adverse conditions uh, greater than 90 percent in different areas of the brain. So the hippocampus is fairly specific for Alzheimer's disease and the cortex is relatively specific for MS. Um, uh, we also saw great support for neuroprotection in an Alzheimer's disease uh, model as well. What really got me excited um, uh, when I joined the company was the uh, neuroregenerative properties of Empton B and uh, seeing the increase in axon length. So when a nerve cell um, essentially is damaged, uh, the axon retracts and is, is unable to um, uh, deal with any further messaging. So we, we saw um, treated uh, uh, degraded neurons and axon growth um, of over 200% uh, in both the cortex and the hippocampus. And we saw an incredible result in a sp spinal cord injury model where after se severing, we saw uh, over 300% increase in length of axons in that model, which is uh, unheard of. Uh, next slide, thank you. Specifically moving to MS, um, we look at uh, myelination and that's really uh, um, the, the key focus uh, for treating the disease. Um, we look at uh, myelin forming cells, which uh, are the OGCs and OPCs in the top graph there. Um, we saw uh, obviously substantial uh, um, um, formation of those cells and myelin itself, we saw a significant increase, which is the bottom graph there as well. Um, and notably, uh, it was increased more than, uh, that was um, greater than 30% higher than a marketed MS treatment in Capaxone. Uh, and Capaxone had peak sales of $4 billion annually. Uh, and recently, uh, we have reported that Empton B also positively influences inflammatory human biomarkers of MS. And this really further validates the disease modifying potential of Empton B for MS. Um, un unlike currently available drugs, we have the potential to regulate the immune process, protect and regenerate nerve cells, and upregulate up myelination. Uh, next slide, thank you. Looking at Alzheimer's disease, we took, we took a, a gold standard mouse model and we saw a slowing of memory decline in that mouse model by greater than, uh, greater than 80%. Uh, as well as the inflammatory side of things in Alzheimer's disease, we saw a reduction in inflammatory markers, as inflammatory markers uh, here as well. So again, we're seeing a dual, um, a dual hit in Alzheimer's disease, which is wonderful. Next slide, thank you. We'll move across to ophthalmology. Um, and in that program where we're focusing on the glaucoma market, um, the, the glaucoma market generates around $3 billion worth of um, sales a year. And no drug that's currently approved and out there is able to restore vision loss. Um, and it's more looking at symptomology, a, a symptom um, a reduction. Uh, and we're, we're obviously also looking at uh, other retinopathies and uh, um, indications that deal with the optic nerve. Next slide, thank you. Uh, this was incredibly exciting to see um, this uh, preclinical data. This was using uh, the precursor to Empton B in telephoning two in, in treating a rat model where we um, essentially sever the optic nerve of one eye 
uh, at the transaction point that you can see uh, in the no treatment area. Uh, with the treatment of uh, metalloplanin 2, we, we saw incredible um, uh, regeneration of, um, uh, of uh, the optic nerve well and truly past the cutoff, uh, the optic cut nerve cutoff point. Uh, next slide, thank you. Um, we, we then looked at a glaucoma pig model, and, and the reason for that is that the pig eye is closely resembling the human eye, and we saw a significant retinal and optic nerve protection in this model uh, and main maintenance of structural integrity of the tissue of the eye, which was further supporting. Next slide, thank you. In optic, in optic therapies, we certainly look, want to look at penetration into the eye so that we can get to the right area of the optic nerve, as well as the um, time that the product actually sits in the eye for. And we saw a uh, product sitting around in that eye for over 14 days, which clinically um, will uh, translate to us being a, a very long-term treatment uh, for glaucoma. Next slide, thank you. Uh, lastly, we'll look at um, the key metrics of the company. So um, NSB IPO'd back in 2008, um, sorry, 2018 rather, um, where we're well cashed up for a, for a small biotech with uh, $13.5 million cash on hand. Uh, that will get us through to the end of, uh, well and truly to the end of uh, at least phase one clinical development in both programs. Um, we have some great milestones that will be coming up in the completion of key preclinical studies. Uh, so you certainly see a lot of reports coming out of the company in relation to that um, over the next uh, few months or two months. Um, uh, last check yesterday, we we're at 31 cents. I think we may have gone up a tiny bit today, um, but we're sitting as a, a market cap uh, around 44 between 44 and uh, $45 million. Uh, again, we, at, at addition, in addition, um, I think we have a great institutional investment. Uh, we have institutional investment from McRae Investment who are founding investors uh, and Alpha Swiss Partners who are international consortium who have come on board relatively recently with great interest in the company. Um, and there is a brief summary slide on the next one. Uh, which uh, is all the information that we've gone through, but we're, we're certainly excited to be initiating and planning those clinical studies um, in the very near future at NSB. And um, that's what I'm keenly excited about anyway. Thanks, Dougal. Thanks. Um, just got time for a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, um, who's the, the major shareholder there, McRae Investments? Who are they? So McRae Investments are a uh, they're a, a, a private uh, they're they're an institutional investment group based in Perth. Uh, so they are a group of um, the um, um, McClue. Uh, who's a, a big mining um, family office sort of setup. Big, yeah, yeah, big mining uh, family office. So they they've certainly uh, they've got a number of um, big projects uh, under management. Or have, have it, that they have invested in. Okay, and, and just some um, probably more technical questions here. So yeah, sure. Alzheimer's disease is very topical recently with the approval of yeah. Agilent um, by and developed by uh, Biogen. How, how would your job fit with them? Yeah, sure. Really interesting. So uh, that they are uh, probably less. Um, we're we're likely to be a lot. Uh, better at, from a disease modifying potential. We have higher disease modifying potential of our product. Um, uh, they are very focused on um, uh, really the, inf the inflammatory process, whereas we're targeting um, regeneration of um, damaged nerve cells within uh, cognitive impairment and also a neuroprotection. So the theory, the theory will be that um, we will be protective for early stage cognitive impairment patients, uh, as well as being uh, very beneficial later down the track as well um, as, as uh, a further decline uh, occurs. And, and um, just before we go, you've had a recent appointment of Paul Rennie. Um, can, can you just talk to that appointment? We've got some other questions, but we'll, we'll probably take those later. Yeah, sure. So uh, Paul, uh, it was great to have Paul uh, come on board. So I was very excited to see his name uh, being involved in clinical development. Uh, I'm, I'm very aware of um, 
his his projects or his his founding of Paradigm. Um, and personally, I've worked with Paradigm in the past in some of their early stage clinical studies. Uh, he's got great experience in commercial in um, in uh, regulatory strategy uh, and and that clinical development side engagement with uh, regulators as well. So that's a a, a very valuable uh, part of expertise that he certainly brings to the table.